So today, today we have a very interesting session by Mr. Sachin Gavas. This session is hosted by VIIT in association with WOW. Mr. Sachin is a product designer at Unscramble. He leads the product design efforts for a conversational AI analytics product. Outside of his work, he's a hobbyist design mentor, and he has mentored many in UX and digital product design. You can also know more about his work at sachingavas.com. That is S-A-C-H-I-N-G-A-W-A-S.com. Sachin, I invite you to take over the panel. Uh, thanks, Anne. Uh, thank, thanks for the, such a nice uh, introduction. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I hope you uh, all can hear me well. So, my name is uh, Sachin Gavas. I'm, uh, I'm an alumni of uh, VRT. So uh, uh, let me begin with uh, uh, another introduction that, that I'm going to uh, 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 you know, give to you guys. So my name is Sachin Gers. I uh, I'm a software developer who turned into a UX designer. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm a product designer at Unscramble.com, which is my current startup, which where I lead the efforts for uh, for, for for the for two of our conversational AI analytics uh, offerings. And uh, uh, I uh, have mentored uh, many students uh, before, and I've, uh, I occasionally, you know, speak at the, speak at some of the UX events about about UX and part design. Uh, when I say I uh, am a software de de developer turned UX designer, is uh, because uh, when I passed out uh, in about year two thousand nine or so. Uh, I had a very uh, traditional uh, career choices to make, like uh, you know, being a software developer or be, being a software tester or being uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, a system administrator, maybe. So uh, I chose to be a software developer at that time, uh, uh, as soon as I passed out. And uh, yes, I worked uh, for like two and a half years, maybe uh, into the software uh, uh, as a software developer and. Uh, then I saw an opportunity uh, be, to be a, to become a UX designer, and I, I was really fascinated after reading all the articles about uh, what exactly a UX designer do. And uh, and since then, yes, uh, it's almost been eight or nine years, maybe. Uh, I'm into uh, I'm into the field of UX design. I uh, have uh, performed uh, many different verticals in UX design because uh, if, you, if you just go over uh, to Google and uh, you know search for UX designer, you will see that there are many different verticals that 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 are part of UX design. So it's not, it's not just one uh, vertical that that you just learn and do it in the uh, or perform it in the in the, in the industry. Uh, but there are many different roles uh, that you that you have to perform uh, uh, when it comes to becoming a UX designer. And uh, I started my career as a UX researcher, which was an entirely or like pure user research uh, uh, role. Uh, and the responsibilities were like um, very different than uh, or or maybe I, I was not really entirely completing all the UX uh, UX respons responsibilities out there. Uh, but it was just user, user research. But uh, as I transitioned further into uh, my career and uh, I started taking more and more roles, uh, which are still part of the UX design. And, uh, you know, you uh, you then become an entire like, full stack UX design. So today I uh, I want to uh, present uh, you uh, you guys something which uh, which I see as, as a UX designer that that is uh, or, or like the part of uh, what exa uh, what what exactly is is uh, what exactly is part of UX designer? Or what exactly do you do as a UX designer? Or what are your responsibilities and how you exactly you can uh, become a UX designer? So uh, there's there's a lot that that we can talk about UX design, uh, but we we have uh, but we are limited by the number of hours. Uh, uh, in, in this webinar, but so I'll, I'll try to uh, explain what exactly UX design is and uh, uh, what are what are exactly all its terms and what are all possible uh, ways you can get into UX design. So let's begin. Uh, I want to begin with uh, a very simple uh, UX design definition. Uh, so go over Google and search for UX design, and you get this standard definition of UX design, which says that is the process of enhancing user satisfaction with the product. 
by obviously increasing the usability, accessibility, and desirability provided in the interaction with the product. So uh, there are a lot of definitions that, that you can uh, that that you will see on on the internet. Uh, but let's uh, for that matter, let's let's take this uh, definition, and I want to uh, you know break it down for you guys into two different parts, where I'll be uh, where I where where it says that uh, UX design. So it is popularly uh, short, written in shorthand as like UXD or UED or experience design XD. So what you say is that the first part is that it's a process of enhancing user satisfaction with the product. So uh, when it says process, I I would rather want to add it. As, as a continuous process. So UX design is not something that, that you do once uh, during the uh, life cycle of a product, but uh, it's, it's more like a continuous design process. And like we say, it, or like, like the industry says that design is never done. So it's, it's not really a job that, that you, it, it's not really a process that, that you do once, uh, or like uh, it's not really a step that, that you do once and like you are done with it, uh, then you, Go to the next step, and so it doesn't like uh, it doesn't happen like that. So it's a, it's a continuous process of enhancing your user satisfaction. So you uh, so you work on one feature, you make sure that uh, the you that particular feature is uh, is helping users uh, to uh, to you know achieve their goals. Uh, then you release that particular uh, version of 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 your, of your enhancements. Uh, but then you go back to the user, then you uh, talk to them again uh, and see what, what exactly uh, is, going, is going wrong or if, it, or if it is really working for them or not. Then you go back to the user. So it's, it's like talking back to the users and asking about the feedback of uh, how this particular feature is working for them or not. Uh, then going back to your desk, designing again, uh, coming, uh, you know, overcoming, overcoming all, all the problems which you found uh, uh, and then releasing again another enhanced version of that particular feature. So it's it's more like a, f a process that that you continues to do during uh, your entire uh, UX design process. So that's that's like the first part of the definition that that, that you will uh, that you will find. So that's a continuous process. So UX design is a continuous process of enhancing user satisfaction. Uh, the second part says that uh, enhancing user satisfaction with the product by improving usability, accessibility, and desirability. Desirable. Now, these three keywords are far, I find uh, really important uh, uh, in terms of uh, designing an entire experience for a product or maybe even for a small feature. So uh, let me explain you guys uh, what exactly these three keywords are. And they are far, uh, I, th I think uh, when, you, when you talk about yours, these are uh, really important terms. And you should be always talking about uh, UX design in, in almost uh, uh, the only, only in these three terms possible. So uh, let's talk about usability. Let's uh, take an example of uh, this uh, this ATM machine. Uh, so uh, so I, if you go to any ATM machine, they will probably uh, look exactly like this uh, with this you know a screen on uh, as as a main display uh, as a main display. Uh, then there is keyboards uh, there or like there you can call it number pads. Then there are uh, these uh, card, uh, you know, you this is where you insert your cards, this is where you get your money from. But if you just want to focus on a small part of this uh, card insert slot, uh, you will find that there are some subtle messages which are which have been given um, uh, uh, on, on, on this on this ATM uh, interface. So uh, think of this entire uh, uh, ATM machine as, as a product uh, or, or possibly a service. And uh, look at the small details that they, that uh, you know uh, <clears throat> that this particular uh, machine is giving us. So, or maybe the product designers of this entire ATM machine is uh, displaying. So, uh, you will see uh, the machine says that uh, you have to place your card uh, in this uh, this fashion or in this order where the chip is uh, upwards. There are these arrows which, where it shows that uh, you have to insert your card here, or maybe this uh, amazing, uh, you know, this uh, the, this nice little flash, uh, the green uh, flash LED light shows that that this is where you have to start. You have to first insert your card, and maybe the same instructions and obviously the same instructions are as well uh, being displayed on 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 this particular display as well. That as soon as you uh, uh, 
come to uh, or like come next to the uh, ATM uh, machine it starts displaying some instruction that you have to first insert your card and then you start this, uh, inserting your card and then you start the, the display then shows you the next action that you have to uh, you know enter your pin and all that so this this is all uh, so this uh, this kind of information that that uh, that it shows uh, on the product or on the interface uh, uh, are giving you giving a user small clues at how exactly I have to operate this machine or how exactly I have to uh, uh, start using this product. So uh, so what exactly a usability is? It is the ease of use and learnability of of a human made object such as a tool or a device. So so when it comes to, uh, yeah, so, so usability in simple manners, uh, just the ease of use of your product and how easy it is for, for your users uh, to learn uh, about its function. So uh, maybe it's an entirely different uh, product which, uh, which, has, uh, uh, which has entirely different features or which, which, has, uh, which, is, which entirely, you know, function in a completely uh, different manner than, than your regular products or regular tools. But it should have uh, an easy learning curve, uh, so it should be easy for for users to learn your new features, uh, and that's uh, and that's what the uh, usability is. So, uh, so it could be a tool, or it could be a device, or maybe uh, or in, in when I say tool or device, it straightly points out to a physical device. But it's it's also it also holds true when uh, when you are actually designing uh, a digital product as well. So yes, uh, that's usability, the ease of use and the learnability that you provide uh, with, with your product or with your interface. Uh, let's again, again, take, go back to the uh, ATM machine and you see that these uh, number pads, which has braille uh, codes on it. So uh, the, uh, the second keyword, which uh, we saw in our definition was, uh, I guess, access, accessibility. So the accessibility is, uh, which straightly says that uh, uh, accessibility is the ability to access by all people, including people with disabilities. Now, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, UX design, we just call it as an inclusive design, where you are making sure that uh, beat of any ab uh, beat of any ability, the uh, all like all kinds of people with all kinds of disabilities should be able to use your product. And uh, if, if we go back to this ATM machine, maybe we will find some clues where uh, maybe the people with uh, hearing problems can actually uh, put in their microphones or maybe, or sorry, the headphones uh, inside, you know, inside. So they, they have given a, given us a nice uh, little uh, head jack to put in. Uh, then uh, on, on the screen, you see that the number of pads has braille codes on it. So uh, if, even the visually impaired person can actually go and press in these keys and with the sounds coming in from, from this particular uh, machine, uh, might as well help the uh, visually impaired person to just go go and you know, uh, take some cash out. So that, that was the second keyword, uh, actually where we say that uh, uh, your product should be easily accessible or the, or the you, people with all kinds of disabilities should be able to uh, access your product or use your product very well. Uh, uh, the third, uh, the third uh, keyword was uh, desire, desirability uh, in our definition. So uh, just by, just look, look at this simple example of where exactly, uh, so where, when, I, when I say that if uh, I have to give you choice between Wagner and BMW, like if I have to give you guys uh, a Wagner and BMW, uh, I'm sure that 100% of the people will go for a BMW. Uh, and that uh, obviously because uh, because of his aesthetic design or maybe uh, the brand that, that we care about, uh, BMW rather rather than Mark Mar Mar or maybe, uh, or maybe the horse power it gives and all that. So obviously when you have to choose between uh, a Wagner and a BMW, you will, you will go for a BMW, uh, you will obviously go for a BMW. And that, uh, that's desirability, uh, that keyword. So desire or emotions behind the decision. So uh, when you have to choose between two products, maybe same product, so both of these are cars, uh, but yes, you have uh, these emotions, these desires behind BMW uh, 
you have more emotion, you have more emotions and more desire towards owning a BMW rather than a, uh, a Wagoner. So uh, that was a third keyword. And uh, uh, so if you go back to the definition once again, uh, let's sort of read it again, that user experience is the process of enhancing user uh, satisfaction by improving the usability, accessibility, and desirability. The three keywords, uh, very important words, provided in the interaction with the product. So interaction is where, uh, like I said, uh, uh, when you have to use an ATM, you have to insert your card. So that's an interaction happening between a human and a machine. And uh, that uh, the second line of, uh, of this definition says that, uh, yes, it's an extended version of uh, human computer interaction, it's AI. Uh, which I believe is your current subject, which which I believe you are you are studying this uh, subject. And what it says that uh, UX is act uh, UX actually extends the XCI design subject by addressing all aspects of product or service uh, as as uh, as perceived by the user or as uh, as used by the users. So that that was uh, so this is the standard definition that that you will get. Uh, you search more and you will find few more definitions, few more such definition, but they still, uh, you know, they still holds the first definition to, or maybe they, uh, you will still find some uh, similar keywords than that being used in other, another definition. So go, uh, go to interaction hyphen design or uh, website. And uh, if you search that website, they will say that user experience design is the process, the continuous process design teams use to create products that provide meaningful and relevant experience to the users. Uh, same, the continuous process uh, design teams use uh, that gives meaningful as in like the usable or uh, more desirable and more accessible experience, uh, relevant uh, or relevant experience to the users, their users. So this involves uh, uh, the design of the entire process of acquiring and integrating the product including the aspects of branding, design, usability, and function. Now this, uh, I, I believe this, this particular definition is far, uh, far more related to, uh, uh, far more related to digital, uh, designing for digital uh, products, uh, maybe your mobile apps, uh, maybe your web apps uh, and all that. So uh, you'll find many such definition, but uh, uh, just remember that there are a couple of, uh, uh, keywords that you have to really make sure that they uh, uh, you have to understand these particular keywords uh, the most or like you have to focus more on the on these keywords a, more, a lot uh, let me go back to this guy uh, his name is Don Norman uh, Don Norman uh, he he's the he's the one who really tossed the term of UX design uh, I don't really remember the name but uh, I believe he was working in uh, in Apple uh, those days and he decided to uh, come up with this uh, particular function or this particular function of team uh, where it, uh, where uh, their entire focus is on building uh, an amazing experience uh, for, uh, for for their products, for, for the products of Apple uh, and all. So uh, he has a website called, uh, or like maybe he runs a group called uh, anandgroup.com and uh, uh, they have some pretty amazing articles that that you guys can go through, uh, which talks only about product design and UX, uh, product, product and UX design. Uh, I, I would really want uh, you guys to check uh, check his website out. Uh, I, I want to uh, go to the next part of the uh, of, of the session where it, uh, where I want to talk about uh, what exactly what are exactly the UX tools and what exactly are their responsibilities. So. Uh, I, I really want to show you. I I, I took a screenshot of uh, the uh, uh, a, a simple job description of a UX designer and what exactly the companies are expecting from uh, from 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 you as a UX designer. And uh, they straight away mentioned like uh, what I, what I, what exactly they expect uh, when we when you join them as a UX designer. So they say that uh, you have to work with. Uh, Product owners, or you have to work with, uh, and you have to work with the development teams. Uh, you have to work closely with the product owners. Where uh, sometimes it also says that some of the job description would also say that you have to close uh, work, work. You have to really work closely with the CEOs as well. So, uh, in my couple of last startups, I have closely worked with uh, startups, even in my current 
started right now uh, the product which i'm uh, product uh, which i'm working on right now uh, uh, i work closely with, uh, with my co-founders and and the ceo uh, where they are the where they are the actual product owners and the managers so uh, what he says that the second line to read uh, closely that uh, you have to work closely with the product owner to make sure the product vision is aligned with the client's needs uh, and assist in design discussions with the client yes so uh, there are business decisions uh, so they like they are like business needs and obviously the business need is to make money of out, uh, out of your product but there are as well client needs or like your user needs uh, which uh, which has to be satisfied in such a way that you you are also able to uh, Uh, achieve your business needs so you have to uh, so you as a product designer or you as a ux designer uh, you have to uh, make sure that both these business needs and both these uh, user needs are very well gelled together uh, you may able to uh, so uh, if if there are like 10 different needs uh, from you uh, fr- from uh, or for example 10 different needs from uh, from users and uh, they like this budget that do you have like for example this could be a business need or this could be the business goal uh, that i care that your business can spend only about these many dollars in 3 months time and you have to deliver like uh 10 different features then you may have to uh, compromise on uh on you know, on you know uh, on 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 the on the total number of uh, Uh, user needs that that you can actually take up uh, into that for the three months time. So, yeah, uh, it's 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 something like that. So you have to uh, make sure that you both of your product vision needs uh, or like both of your product needs and uh, or like both of your user needs and business needs are uh, very well gelled together. Uh, they go hand in hand as well. Uh, design beautiful and usable WordPress uh, web and mobile applications for uh, uh, clients. Uh, by design, it actually means only design and not. uh not development create user journeys workflows and wireframes for the product i'll show you a couple of uh, uh images where uh, all these all these user journeys and workflows and wireframes are um i've uh, i've shown in the pictures uh, in in the next slides perform user experience research to maximize the market fit of the product uh learn new tools and techniques uh, obviously it's a the the number of tools that that you can learn uh, in ux design field are, are uh, there are many uh, but you can choose to uh, sh- you know you can choose to learn a few and uh, you know uh, should be able to do your job well as well so uh, collaborate with the team members so uh, just look at these uh, the highlighted uh, 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 highlight highlight lines that you have to collaborate with your team members you have to Uh, keep on learning your new tools and techniques you have to make sure that you are doing your user research well that make sure that the market fit of the product uh, uh, is is, uh, is is you know is amazing uh, you have to create user journey so there are many different uh, uh, verticals or there are many different sides of ux design uh, responsibilities that that you have to perform as a ux designer so uh, if you if you go to a, uh, you maybe a, a software developer's job description maybe uh, you are expected just to code like maybe just to code in uh, maybe three different languages or so but uh, when it comes to ux design you have to make sure you have to learn few more skills uh, as in how to you know uh, how to uh, uh, how to convince you about your approach or how to convince about your solution to the product owners the ceos the stakeholders the co-founders so that's like completely different skills that that you have to learn you have to uh, you have to learn the skill of creating or designing beautiful uh, ui uh, for your web or mobile apps you have to uh, you should be able to do some research on how to create user journeys workflows you have to, you should be able to talk to the users you should be able to test uh, test your product with the users you should be able to uh, you know upskill yourself uh, with learning new tools and techniques uh, just to make sure that uh, you know uh, your product design or your product like uh, product development goals or like timelines are being achieved uh, and obviously you have to collaborate with your, with your team members so so that team could be your ceo that could be your stakeholder that could be your developers uh, and and maybe yes and uh, might as well be your uh, users as well so you should be able to collaborate with them uh, just to make sure that you are delivering an amazing experience for uh, for your product so that that's a standard jd that's a standard job description uh, that 
that that that you will always see uh, when you when you when you are looking for a UX uh, job. Uh, so uh, let me show you guys a couple of pictures of uh, what exactly the life of a UX designer looks like. Uh, let me take a look. So, uh, yeah, so uh, in this picture, you will see uh, they are talking to your users. So you have to talk uh, talk to your users uh, a lot many times. Maybe uh, before the start of the product design, or maybe even after you you have something in your hand as as a product, as a, as a, like a developed product, you have to take this product, you have to take that product, and you have to go talk to your users. You have to test it. Uh, with your users and you have to watch them how how exactly they are going how exactly they are using your product You have to understand their needs. You have to understand their goals What exactly they want to achieve by using your product and all and what exactly are the expectations from your product? So so they uh, when you when you when you look at the life of a UX designer like every day uh, Responsibly that they perform maybe uh, may, Many a times that's uh, it involves a lot of talking to the users uh, there are like a lot of post-it notes. So when you talk to your users, you have to get back to your desk, and uh, uh, you you have to you know uh, uh, you have to uh, find all you have to uh, nurture all all those needs, or you have to find out uh, from from that last discussion that that you that you did with the uh, with, with your users. You have to figure out what exactly they are expecting, what exactly your users are expecting from uh, from your product, and you have to come back to that board. You have to come come back to your uh, UX war room, and uh, you have to come up. So these are like some user flows, like some of the user journeys that people try to uh, try to draw first with the with the sticky notes, uh, post-it notes. Uh, so that's like that's like pretty standard uh, war room that that we'll see in any UX design studio or maybe even a uh, bigger companies that that you go that uh, they first try to uh, go back to the board and uh, uh, figure out what exactly the people's needs and they write it down and post it over there uh, as like so uh, try to arrange everything uh, in in one feature and try to what. Uh, Achieve. Uh, try to arrange uh, all these post systems together uh, as, as like one feature. Uh, there's there involves a lot of sketching, uh, a lot of sketching on the paper, uh, a lot of uh, it's it's also called as paper prototyping, uh, where you have to so instead of going uh, right away going uh, going back to your tool or like going back to your desk, uh, open your open your laptop and a tool uh, design tool. And start uh, designing right away. The uh, most of the UX designers would prefer uh, a pen and paper first and uh, draw something on the flow or like draw those user flows that how user is going to start from how how exactly his onboarding journey is going to be uh, in your product and how exactly he's going to uh, start using other features uh, in, in in your product. So there involves a lot of sketching. We call it uh, paper prototyping. Pro paper prototyping here uh, involves a lot of. If you, if you can see these uh, screens over here, mobile screens. So they use stencils uh, and they use pen and paper, and that's it. So that's how they go forward. And once they have satisfied with uh, with sketching, they might as well uh, go uh, use a wireframe tool. Uh, so uh, and uh, so they might as well use about uh, a wireframe tool on 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 their laptop on the on 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 their uh, desktop and uh, start creating these wireframes. Now these wireframes uh, can be connected uh, together. So uh, just to create, uh, uh, I I would not say a look like a look alike. Uh, uh, a look-alike prototype, but uh, it's just a skeleton of uh, of of your entire app interface. So uh, everything is just a skeleton. It's uh, there. There are no colors. Uh, literally, they don't use any colors. So uh, it's just uh, green, black, or white. Uh, that's it. So that's like that's all possible colors that that you are supposed to use when you're actually fireframing. Uh, many a times people uh, choose to skip this step as well, paper, paper, paper prototyping, 
but uh, yes we you know, now that uh, they are like is uh, very easy tools that that you can use uh, to draw these kind of wireframes and uh, you know skip to it because uh, it has now become really easy to create some amazing uh, amazing wireframes uh, uh, even before going jumping jumping to uh, you know uh, creating a high fidelity prototype now, high fidelity. When I talk about high fidelity prototype, uh, this exactly this this is how it uh, may look like. So, a, a lot of prototyping. A lot of pro prototyping is mean uh, you're actually going to use a tool like Sketch or maybe a tool like Adobe XD Experience Design or maybe a Figma. So these are all designing designing and prototyping tool where you are going to actually design your UI. So. That looks like uh, so that high fidelity UI, uh, which we call, it's uh, is going to look like an exactly exact replica of your product. It's just that there's no code involved in it. It just the uh, it looks like your product, which you can uh, like like in this picture. This uh, lady is testing her uh, prototype, which this is this is this I believe is a sketch, which she has designed in Sketch, and she's pro uh, she's testing on on her mobile that how exactly. The screen is going so maybe she's holding uh, an iPhone uh, possibly, and uh, she's testing her uh, iPhone your iPhone UX designs, uh, iPhone UI design in her uh, iPhone phone. So, uh, so that's uh, so that's prototyping. So she can actually click on a button and she can go back, uh, go to the next screen and all that. So that's that involves a lot of. Uh, so that's that's actually uh, prototyping and uh, UI design. Let's go back to uh, the next step where once you have uh, prototype your product you have to go back to your user uh, in this step you uh, uh, you you have just taken up uh, you have just taken up your uh, prototypes or the mockups which uh, uh, which you have designed here so I, I i'm still saying that there, there's still no code involved in it and you're going back to your users in this case maybe a a, a boy who's playing possibly a game uh, and here uh, you're uh, and you're asking him to uh, use your prototype, right? Uh, obviously, in case of game, you uh, you cannot just taste it with the prototypes or the uh, you know uh, static prototypes or uh, uh, mockups. Uh, but uh, but but with screens like where you have to test your mobile app, so something something like this, where uh, uh, you know you have designed your uh, mobile, you are uh, you are done your mobile, you are designed, and you want to test it with your users that. How exactly they are using it? Uh, uh, is your journey flow right? Uh, is is they are clicking the right uh, button when which you want ex uh, which you want uh, your users to uh, click? Uh, are they being distracted by any of the content that that you have put in instead of focusing on the most important content on on the screen? So you can test all those possibilities uh, in your user testing uh, process. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, so yes, so that's uh, that's that's user testing uh, uh, with with your users even before writing the single line of code. Uh, so that's that's pretty much uh, the life of a UX designer. That that uh, or like these are these are all the possible uh, responsibilities that I wanted to show you guys in pictures uh, uh, of, of a UX designer looks like. Uh, let's go back to uh, let's go to the next uh, where uh, where it shows you. Uh, a life cycle of a product development, maybe. Uh, yes, it's about uh, life cycle of a product development where uh, where uh, we focus, uh, where we as UX designer have to focus more on uh, these three aspects or these three steps of a UX design uh, of of a product design product design uh, phase. Uh, now, like, like I said in my first part, that UX designer is a lot of things. There are many sides, many verticals to it. And uh, you, as a UX designer, uh, you have to focus on uh, a lot many things uh, at once. Uh, it's uh, so there are like uh, different needs of a startup and, and a big company. So when you have joined as a UX designer, or when you join as a UX designer in a startup, because uh, they are they are limited on their budget, they expect uh, you from from you as as to uh, you know uh, take part or take responsibility of all these three different pieces uh, as one. So 
uh, in my current company, I uh, work as uh, the only UX designer or the, or the only product designer in, uh, in the team. And I have to make sure that I am talking to my users. So that's that's one phase of research that, that I do. Uh, I also make sure that I uh, go back to my desk and design an amazing prototype, an amazing UI design. Uh, and I also make sure that I have to, I have to prototype it well and I have to give it or like I have to test it with my stakeholders or the users as well. So I, I pretty much manage uh, these entire three uh, three responses altogether. But if you uh, but that's but that's a startup. So uh, in a startup, you are expected to uh, work as a full stack designer or work as a full stack UX designer. Uh, there's there's one more part of being a full stack UX designer is front end development. Uh, so if you have designed uh, a prototype, you, you, you might as well be expected to uh, um, actually develop it uh, or actually develop its UI itself, uh, which could be, you know, uh, using HTML, CSS, and JS uh, for, uh, for developing uh, a web app. Uh, but it's also, it's all, also holds true for, for you know, uh, developing the UI, just the UI part of, uh, of a mobile app or maybe Android app or maybe an iOS app. And there are, there are those tools uh, which are available for you to, uh, 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 for you to uh, just, you know, develop the entire interface, uh, which you have designed in your earlier features. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, but yes, I, I don't do this, but uh, I think I think these pretty much uh, these three phases are enough for you to become a full stack uh, UX designer. Uh, but uh, like I said, uh, when you when you go to big companies like maybe Amdocs or maybe Barclays or maybe uh, Accenture, they, you will find uh, 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 big UX teams uh, 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 on, on the floors. So they have uh, people who do, uh, they have different people who do research. They have different people who do UI design. They have different people who do interaction design or maybe motion design and all that. So there are teams, uh, different teams who, uh, who do uh, different jobs or different responsibilities. But obviously when you're part of a startup, uh, you're supposed to uh, 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 be a full stack designer. And I would always suggest that uh, when you want to be, become a UX designer, you uh, you must know like you 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 should strive to uh, perform all these three responsibilities together. Uh, yes, like I said, so research uh, the first phase uh, of UX designer where you can uh, where you uh, if you want you can take up a responsibility as a user researcher because there are different uh, job uh, jobs available just just for user researchers, usability analyst, or information architect. Uh, now these two, uh, uh, I, I don't want to go deeper into uh, what exactly their roles and responsibilities are, uh, uh, but yes, uh, you can uh, Google search on it, wow, what exactly they do. It's, it's pr pretty fairly simple uh, and, and you will you'll possibly, you know, get a deep understanding. You can possibly get a deep understanding on what exactly their responsibilities are. Uh, visual and motion, uh, you can take you can take up this field or you can take this side of the uh, as in when when I when I say uh, you can take this side is is uh, is what I meant is uh, you can actually choose to uh, um, be a part of this side of UX design where it involves being a UX visual designer or maybe an interaction designer or maybe a, a motion designer and uh, uh, and uh, as you like there there are these different roles available in the industry uh, for you to become a visual designer or maybe take this side of uh, UX design, visual and motion, or take this research side of the uh, UX design. Uh, and the third phase is uh, the UX development where uh, you're actually going to execute that design which you created. Like, like the, I showed you this uh, uh, this process of UX design, UI, UI design till front end development design. So, you can take up uh, either of these uh, four sites, uh, UX development, UI visual motion design, sorry, the three sites. Uh, they probably have combined uh, UX design and interaction, interaction design, UI design together. Uh, but yes, the last phase of UX design, uh, UX design could be the UX development itself. So you can go uh, and uh, if, you, if you are really interested in becoming, uh, uh, becoming a software developer, you can actually be part of the front end development team uh, of, of, of your product. And uh, you can actually execute that UI. You can actually execute those animations or interactions uh, just so you know, add that delightful 
uh, element in, uh, into your uh, into your product. So there are like three different sites where you can go: research, visual, visual and motion, or uh, UX development. Uh, I want to show you this picture of uh, UX Unicorn where. Uh, you can search uh, for UX Unicorn and probably you will get exactly the uh, same picture uh, in, in the results. So which involves, you know, uh, it it's just talks about, uh, uh, you know, uh, user research or like, or like UX Unicorn is like, uh, it's, a, it's like a job role, I would say, uh, you'll, fi you'll find in a uh, in couple of years uh, going forward that uh, a UX guy or like a person who is able to do all kinds of uh, all kinds of UX activities, all kinds of UX process together, uh, where he's able to do the user research, the usability testing, he's able to do uh, the user journey mapping, the exploration part of uh, the product design cycle, uh, the uh, fineness, the visual design, the, uh, we talked about UI, UI design, the details and the lightful elements that, that you can add uh fineness uh, of of being a ux unicorn and there are many such uh elements that that you can actually uh you know uh, uh, that you can ex actually explore uh so data analytics uh which is big right now uh, that uh, uh you have to so say the evidence side so uh there right now there are tools where uh uh, or like uh, uh, data analytics tool where uh, you get to know that how exactly your users are using your app uh, what what kind of screens uh, they are getting uh, a lot of problems on where exactly they are uh, uh, you know uh, getting off the board or they are not able to sign up so you, you can actually find out those uh, those user journeys where uh, or like you get some data about like uh, out of 600 onboarding users 300 found uh, problem in uh, onboarding or like creating an actual sign up uh, and all that so you can get that kind of data and you can decide uh, what screen or what user flow you have to make changes to so they're like those uh, uh, those aspects of uh, being a UX icon where uh, you can actually you know uh, upskill yourself uh, uh, being able to understand the behavioral insights of you right so there are many such vehicles we are short on time let me just uh, go next uh, the third part uh, is opportunities and getting started in UX. Uh, uh, UX design uh, is among the top five in demand scale. Uh, it's still in, uh, it was still in top 10. It's, it is still in top five right now uh, in uh, Jan 2020 report of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you can go search for it. And there are many other, uh, many other skills, but uh, UX design is still, uh, uh, still among the top 10. Uh, uh, skills uh, that industries are expecting uh, or like the industries uh, want to have like even a smaller startup now wants UX designers uh, on board uh, no matter how small but we want uh, a UX designer to be on board and uh, when I say uh, startup it's not just a startup who uh, is developing a product but it's there are also UX design studios there who are entirely dedicated uh, to creating all these uh, all these assets, all these assets of uh, research, all these assets of UI design, all these assets of interaction and front-end development. So there are those UX design studios where you can have an opportunity or, uh, as well. So uh, uh, I just wanted to show you this fact that it's it's uh, UX design is among the top five in demand skills. Uh, if you consider about uh, Pune area, uh, I'm going to show. Uh, uh, if you go on Payscale or, or on Glassdoor, you will find that the uh, an average annual annual salary of a UX design could be around uh, seven lakh to nine lakhs. So uh, for beginners, like even for with zero experience and just just to or like just have a strong portfolio, who or like people who are just entirely new to UX design. Uh, but obviously, it is expected that you know uh, about UX design. You so you have to. Uh, take some courses, you have to uh, do your self-study and all that, and you have to know what exactly you do. And probably you might as well learn two or three tools uh, in UX design. And uh, when you get an entry into uh, UX design, maybe uh, if you have an experience about zero to three years, maybe you, you, you're possibly to get uh, uh, a package of like seven lakh or nine lakh uh, maybe per annum. Uh, 
yes uh, uh, my my startup offers uh, uh, a basic package for like about uh, 7 to 8.5 or something uh, for just even even for the beginners so yes uh, you can explore uh, at least at least look at the salary and just try to explore that uh, this particular field uh, uh, yes yeah, structured so uh, how you can get started is uh, you can go for some structured online courses on coursera and udemy you will find some basic foundation course uh, very basic course that you can take up uh, i would uh, i would first suggest you to uh, take some structured online courses and then uh, if you are still not able uh, you are still not confident on uh, what, what you have learned i think uh, you should, i i would suggest uh, you being in, in i i believe everyone is engineer here uh, everyone uh, is an engineering graduate here uh i would say that if you want then uh, you can uh, join the ux design school uh, like some local ux design schools or you can even attain some ux workshop and there, there's a lot you can learn in a day's workshop also uh find yourself a mentor uh, people who are already working in ux uh, you can find some colleagues you can find your friends who are already working uh, uh working as ux designer and you will you will get at least get to know that what exactly you have to learn first uh, uh, and where exactly you can start or what tools you can start with and all that. so find yourself a mentor that that can really uh, help you out uh, the next is you have to be, be really aware of ux trend because there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of changes happening in the ux industry there are a lot of changes happening in the uh, uh, in the entire uh, product design uh, uh, vertical uh there are new devices coming in there are new screen sizes coming in you have to cope up with that and if, if you really have to cope up with that you really have to you know uh, read all these kind of blogs and uh, you have to follow some inspirations on dribble.com and beans.com where you will find a lot of product designers and all uh, and they create a lot of amazing stuff almost every day and uh, and that's that's how you can be uh, very well be aware about uh, ux trends so make sure that you are uh, you know uh, using these uh, uh, these blogs uh, these inspiration sites and uh, uh, the last i believe is uh, you have to learn at least one design tool uh, which is uh, which is used for creating your design and prototyping uh, uh, there are three popular uh, ux design tools right now figma adobe xd and sketch uh, you can choose to be proficient in any of these three Uh, i would say, i i personally love figma a lot uh, uh it's free uh and uh, uh it ha- it is far more powerful than uh, adobe xd or sketch at least it's far more powerful than sketch uh, i haven't really explored much about adobe xd xd uh, but uh, i i see that adobe xd has far more uh, amazing prototyping uh, uh, features than than figma but yes figma is na- nonetheless uh, it's not uh, it certainly it's certainly superior in creating uh, uh amazing uh, amazing design with or maybe i would i would say it's more structured design uh, which is far more scalable uh, going forward uh, in your product design cycle so yes uh, i think uh, yeah i think the last one is uh, increasing your online presence so if you if you learn these tools you might uh, you should you should also push yourself in building your own design portfolio so uh, i'm talking uh, in 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 the uh, in, from from this pers- perspective where uh, let's assume that uh, you have zero experience in ux design and you learn you follow all these steps of uh, learning from a course a course or maybe from a local design school or all or maybe you might as well you learn learn figma uh, figma tool or maybe one of one or two tools and uh, go ahead and uh, i i would suggest you should increase your online presence by building like creating one or two stuffs uh, uh in those tools uh, maybe you know uh, might as well publish your user research or maybe might as well uh, publish your use uh, usability analysis uh, of a particular product and just publish it on linkedin or maybe might as well create your own website where you can publish all your articles uh, publish your designs and i i would suggest you uh, build your design portfolio with some sample use cases you can take some local products or you can take some simple apps and you can uh, create uh, do some these uh, user research or maybe might as well you know you do the usability analysis about it and just publish it uh, online uh, how it helps is uh, even even though you are you are going to be beginner even though you you are a beginner 
uh, when you actually approach these companies uh, when when they say that you have zero experience but you still have like this much work done uh, as as you explained and they might as well uh, you know uh, get you on board uh, uh, if if they are really impressed with your uh, the kind of work you which you have published online so yes that that's that i believe is uh, is the end of all the slides uh so i th i think i can i'm open for answers uh, i'm open for questions right now okay uh thank you sachin that was a very nice uh, uh, experience uh, listening to the ux designer or product designer <clears throat> uh, i'll begin with the qa session am i audible yeah i can hear you okay uh, so we have uh, many questions uh, so the first question is from sumit mm -hmm. uh, it is related to uh, masters so do you think masters in sci would help me understand and get a boost in career after my btech in csd uh i honestly i mean that's that's my personal opinion uh, though i haven't taken any uh, formal education uh, right after my engineering graduation i i i was a developer and then i turned a ux designer i'm like a self made ux designer and i haven't really taken any uh, formal education in ux design but i would really suggest that you should uh, uh, you can check uh, what exactly is being taught if it is really industry specific uh, you can go for it but i would right now like at, at this point of time when, during this pandemic i i would rather say that just go and jump into this field of ux design uh, uh, just learn a lot of stuff about it and i, I would say just uh, see if uh, you know you are actually getting uh, an opportunity where you can actually uh, or like you when you enjoy in a startup or, or a small company and where you can actually learn more about ux design i think that's 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 how you should start i believe okay uh we have a next question from anjali uh do mm -hmm. companies coming in for the placements in engineering colleges look for ux designers uh i'm not sure if they have started uh, yet uh, but uh, uh, honestly the the big companies which i have seen or like which i've been part of uh, uh they don't directly recruit you as a ux designer yes they might as well just re uh, recruit you as as a as a fresher first and they uh, they'll probably put you into three months of uh, you know the this learning and development sessions and all that but uh, they won't teach you ux design right away uh, but right after their learning and development period is over like three months or six months maybe uh, they might as well ask you about uh, your uh, choices and that time i think you should uh, really talk to them about uh, your interest uh, your ux design interest but as as far as i know uh, big companies don't directly hire you uh, from the campus as a ux designer but there is there is one chance where you can you can actually uh, follow up with the uh, fill, uh, follow up with them some 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 of the startups where they might as well hire you as a ux designer or like ux intern ux intern is a very well uh, uh, set position in the industry even in the area of pune and mumbai where uh, you can find uh, there are a lot of people joining in as a ux intern even i had like a couple of ux interns a uh, few months back uh, we had them so uh, they learn and they were actual uh, you know, college past uh, uh, fresh uh, college fresh past so uh, yes ux intern is a position uh, i think uh, if you just uh, google for ux intern position available ux intern position i think you might as well find you Okay, so I hope next time you consider uh, VIIT to have the interns for uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay, we have a question from uh, Pooja, and she wants uh, you to guide her on writing the case study. Yeah, sure, I uh, I can do that. As in, like, uh, do I have to answer the question or like, we, we can? Yes, yes. Okay. She, I mean, uh, she can. Then... Okay. Uh, can can you just repeat that question? uh she uh, she is saying can you guide us on how to write test cases or maybe sorry case studies oh case studies so uh that really could be a long discussion puja uh, but i think uh, i have uh, you have my email uh, i think you can if you just 
uh, write me email over like I'll, I'll just reply back to your uh, email this could really take a long uh, and my I might as well send you some sample case studies which uh, I have written in past or uh, from some other designers for uh, inspiration okay so Pooja you can uh, write an email to Sachin and reply back. Uh, next we have from Avijit. Uh, mm -hmm. Should we? Uh, what is that? Should we hone our coding skills if we want to dive into this field? And if yes, then which is the programming language? Uh, if if I take you back to this uh, product life cycle. You'll see there are three different uh, phases that uh, you can upskill yourself as a UX designer. Uh, uh, but there's no way you have to do uh, any kind of coding. There is like zero coding involved in any uh, all these three phases. You know these three phases, you are good to become a full stack UX designer. Like you are like know all UX designer. Uh, but if you want to be, uh, there's one more phase of front end development where you have to actually go uh, and create an actual uh, uh, or like develop an actual uh, UI which which you have designed here. Uh, you can take that uh, vertical, but um, you know the looking at the response, the kind of response or the, the big response rate that the UX designer does. It's really rare uh, that you will find uh, a UX designer doing all these four phases uh, as as like one one person. So it's really uh, it's quite impractical as well uh, but also uh, but uh, you know in some uh, in some companies you might as well find uh, two or three designers UX designers uh, doing the job of uh, you know performing all these four steps but yes if you uh, want to be that UX unicorn like this one uh, I think uh, yes you can you can go ahead and uh, learn a uh, Programming language of maybe an HTML, CSS, JS, uh, and that, that's that's for web app development. Uh, if you want to be uh, more in, focused on uh, a mobile UX designer, I think you sh you should learn uh, uh, Android's uh, Android Design Studio, and uh, there's one uh, for iOS or for like iOS mobile. I think uh, I, I forgot the name of of the app. Uh, if you email back, email me back. I'll, I'll just return back, write back to you that uh, what exactly that language is. I think, I think it's yes. I think it's Swift, uh, where you can uh, design, when you can actually develop those uh, iOS, uh, iOS mobile mobile apps, like develop those mobile apps. So like, so there's Swift for iOS. Uh, there's uh, Android Design Studio, uh, which you can use, uh, uh, Android SDK, I believe, where you can actually develop the uh, develop those actual UIs and Obviously, for web app, you have HTML, CSS, and JS. Okay, uh, Sachin, there is a question from uh, your uh, professor, Dr. Uh, Deshpande, Yogesh sure. Deshpande, sir. Yes, yes. Sure, sir. Is IT or computer engineering background sufficient to become a UX designer, or an undergraduate degree is in UX design is necessary for the profession? Uh, IT and uh, I mean I uh, like I said I haven't really taken any formal education in UX design so I I don't have any degree in uh, in UX design uh, uh, but uh, like I'm I'm a self-made UX designer and I've learned everything on my own uh, while working on on these uh, on these UX design projects uh, I think IT uh, being having an engineering ba background really helps you. Uh, there are courses offered by many other uh, institutes in Pune as well, uh, who offer entirely, whose whose who's entire like stream uh, is UX design. Uh, so it's like maybe like four years of course. But I, uh, the difference which I find uh, being an engineer and being an uh, you know uh, a pure uh, pure background of UX design, I think uh, you as an engineer has far more advantages on understanding how systems work. Uh, which uh, like we already have like some preface and some uh, some knowledge of how exactly uh, programs are written and uh, or like how, how code is written and how exactly the system is supposed to work. So we know how uh, the entire uh, product life cycle or product development life cycle, and that really helps us a lot uh, in actually collaborating with the uh, with the developers. Uh, like if you uh, because if you uh, you know. Uh, Take an amazing like gaudy experience with uh, uh, 
uh, design an amazing quality experience uh, and uh, just give it to the developers he will say that uh, the kind of programming language or the kind of uh, development stack we use uh, it's not possible uh, the, the ui the ui the ui which you are designing is not possible in this language right so uh, that should not happen i mean, uh, so you uh, you being an engineer you always have an up uh, upside over any other ux designers who are like purely into ux design uh, or like who have taken uh, four years of graduation course in ux design uh, and because uh, you have that upside because you have an understanding of how systems work how software systems work and i i think uh, me being an engineer and then getting into being uh, a software developer for for some time and then getting into design was uh, has really helped me a lot because i understand the system i know how the databases work i know how uh, how uh, you know what is possible in this particular language and you know uh, what 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 kind of possible interaction that that we can have on the on the interface so that really has helped me to collaborate well with the uh, stakeholders and uh, design exactly what is possible and what is not okay uh, i think that answered the next question uh, of desh pandey sir that uh, uh, they were, they were keen to uh, know that what motivated you to take the ux design as a career choice again the digital software coding job taken up by the majority of it right right absolutely uh okay we have a, a next question which is based uh, related to uh, ar vr uh, field augmented reality mm -hmm. and virtual reality field. Uh, i lost the question actually uh, okay can you can you just focus on uh, uh, us designers role in the augmented and virtual reality field Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, see, uh, AR and VR has entirely uh, different interaction patterns. Uh, when I say interaction patterns, is uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, using a particular service through AR and VR, or maybe using a particular product through AR and VR. Uh, so, it's it's the I showed you an example of an ATM machine. Uh, I, I mean, I can just go there and I can just press some numbers and I get my money out. Uh, so that's how I interact with that machine. But uh, uh, AR and VR has entirely uh, different traction patterns, just like how uh, the interaction pattern is different in Android and different in iOS, right? So, uh, so AR, so yes, so uh, AR and VR has. Uh, uh, do you you have like some specialized uh, ux uh, ux skills to uh, uh, ux skills to uh, learn uh, when when you want to design for such different kind of uh, uh, interaction pattern so it, uh, maybe uh, maybe it's uh, uh, it, it could be ar and vr obviously uh, but there like another uh, uh, part as well like uh, i have like uh, you know uh, I have Google Home at my home, and uh, the only way I can interact with that device is through voice. And there are just taps uh, on it for uh, you know uh, uh, lowering the value, volume, or increasing the volume, and all. So there are uh, different patterns to it. So you have to uh, you know get into a different kind of UX role out there because the uh, device is different, the product is different, the interaction pattern is different. You have to learn that, and then. Uh, when I say that you have to learn that, uh, what I mean is that there are there are those uh, design patterns or there are those design guidelines uh, which are already there on the internet. You just search for it, or maybe you might as well to search for like how to UX design for a, for an AR product for for an uh, VR product. So, like I said, so uh, UX is uh, UX is the top five scale because uh, uh, there are many products or there are many kind of different products are coming into the market and uh, uh, they are going to be different ways uh, people are going to interact with those products so uh, it's 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 a top scale big uh, the ux design is a top scale because of uh, you know different varieties we have and different ways people are interacting with, with those products so uh, uh, I, th I think uh, yes uh, uh, 
it it just that you have to learn those different design patterns learn those ux design different patterns for different uh, uh, different devices and different products now i hope that uh, answers your question but it has a really important role uh, as in Sachin, there are there are uh, so many questions uh, uh, on how to how to get the uh, internship in the in this particular field and what are the uh, what you can say uh, skills that you highlight when when you are going to be recruited as a UX designer. So what are the skills that to be uh, mentioned uh, on to your uh, resume or maybe portfolios? So can you just enlighten on this point? So uh, what skills you want to, we are supposed to learn? Uh, yes, what, what skills, uh, what are the tools or maybe where okay. you can get the basic uh, uh, learner's knowledge for, about the UX design and all. So uh, yes, uh, there are a couple of foundation basic courses to get you started with uh, courses. And I would I always suggest, because when I started with UX design, I started with this, uh, just to get an overall understanding of what exactly this UX design field is. So I would suggest you uh, go for Udemy or go for Coursera uh, to you know uh, look at these sort of foundation courses or learn uh, these foundation courses. And they are being taught by some industry experts. So uh, yes, uh, do that. Uh, on top of that, you what you can uh, if you're still not confident, uh, go for a local design school. And the skills and obviously the finding mentor and becoming aware about your that's I'll, I'll I'll share the PPT with you, sir. Uh, but yes, the skills which I would suggest you uh, can learn is uh, some of the tools uh, which are available uh, for you to right away start with. So uh, this Figma, uh, which I would really strongly suggest, it's free uh, for for uh, for like two or three, or maybe uh, maybe for maybe for a project or so. I think which which I believe it's sufficient for just to get you started. So Figma is a design tool, a design and prototyping tool, which uh, which you can uh, which you can learn, uh, and you can start from today itself, uh, even even about even without uh, you know. Uh, you know, worrying about uh, how exactly research works. So uh, you can just go ahead and uh, look at some mobile app as an inspiration uh, on, on the sites, which uh, I showed you here and just go on uh, creating these, uh, creating these amazing uh, UI mocks. So I'll show you this, this site. Uh, if I go to card design you'll probably find some amazing apps. So for example, this one, I mean, they have like, uh, you, you're not supposed to like uh, create an exact same kind of uh, uh, representation or maybe UI design, maybe we are, obviously we are not supposed to, uh, you as UX are not supposed to uh, work as a graphic designer because graphic designer has a different, uh, different responsibilities altogether. Uh, uh, if you just uh, search on Google about uh, what is the difference between graphic design and UX design, you will, you'll probably uh, get to know about his uh, responsibility. But yes, uh, you can go ahead and, you know, uh, uh, look at these inspirations and use the tools which I suggested you uh, in the PPT and start designing something like this and uh, test your prototypes. So that's, that's one skill that, that I would prefer. Uh, you can start with the, uh, the other skill, which I would suggest is uh, know more about how, uh, how to, how users behave like, uh, when when they're using a particular kind of an app um, uh, or how uh, what exactly the behavioral analysis is how, how, how to do that usability analysis and all that so you can start so when you want to start with research I think there are like few couple of usability analysis or information architecture and all that so there those are a couple of skills that you can start with Yes, even uh, I can share, uh, there is a course on uh, Coursera, uh, which is uh, available from the University of Michigan. And right. the course is user interface design. So you can start right. with uh, user interface design introduction part. And there are uh, four different specializations into that particular course. So you can start with the foundation and you can go to the expert, uh, expert course right. also. And there are right. many more uh, uh, websites or uh, blogs, those are available for uh, learning about the uh, user interface design. So you have usability.goe, you have... Uh, so uh, if you have any other other questions, uh, 
this is for the audience if you have any other questions uh, you can mail it to sachin and sachin will definitely reply you back because there are so many tools there are so many uh, prototype uh, templates those are available online which you can use for uh, user interface design and all uh, i guess we'll uh, uh, end this uh, q and a session and uh, this was a very very good learning experience uh, i hope for all the participants and uh, for the panelists also and uh, on behalf of viit alumni association i thank uh, uh, sachin gavat for uh, sharing his knowledge and expertise in user experience and user experience design thank you sachin thank you thank you everyone I, I'm, i'm really glad I, yes i and i i'd like to thank uh, wow also for their uh, support in organizing this webinar and finally uh, thank you to all the participants and attendees uh, if there are students from uh, vishwakarma institute or vishwakarma group i request them if you have any query or any doubts which is which remains unsolved in this particular session please mail it to sachin gavat he has shared his email address and i'll i'm sure uh, he'll definitely answer those particular queries uh, thank you everyone Thank you guys. Weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. With that we'll now close the session. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.